everyone, how are you? I'm trying a longer format vlog this time and hope you'll find it interesting with all the chatty bits. I went to lots of interesting places this time and as usual there are some painting segments throughout. A bit of update on things, this was the sunset from my new place. It gives a beautiful wide open view of the sky. I'm very thankful to be in the midst of two books with picture book clients simultaneously so it's going to be a busy few months ahead. Anyways, back to something more laid back. We went to check out an antique market. Usually I'm on the hunt for toys, but since I recently moved to a new place, I wanted to look for plates and home decor. Other interesting items I spotted was an old panda plush. I quite like how old teddy bears are so simply constructed and their imperfections are charming to me. This was a really unusual and funny find. A giant watercolors paint set, probably from the 60s or 70s, but upon closer look the pans were categorized as non-poisonous and toxic colors. Since I'm working on two picture book projects right now, I wanted to look for new reference materials. One weekend, we headed to the Toronto Reference Library to check out their used bookstore. But it was around Canada Day and the shop was closed, so we opted to explore the TCAF Comic Arts gift shop instead. Day with Alfredo Dopaki and honey butter Korean fried chicken. The last stop was groceries run with Dorky. Part of how I keep my illustration career moving forward is to develop and publish my own personal projects, which I then try to wholesale to bookstores. So I've been wrapping the latest project and sending the files off to production. As a freelancer, I think it's important to consider ways to generate income in a variety of ways, especially through your own initiatives. Their budgets might change, projects get cancelled, and it's not as sustainable to revolve your business around those critical factors alone. That's why I'm always on the hunt for new ideas and I really love that Toronto Library can offer such affordable books from about $2 to even 50 cents. I'm always surprised by the selection of books at the shop as they're quite new titles and in very good condition too. I've seen the Pigeon series by Mo Williams and it's won a Caldecott honor too, which is highly acclaimed in the children's publishing industry so I wanted to study what makes his books a success. Its very simplistic and humorous approach reads like a comic for young kids. 
It's a pigeon talking to the reader directly and shares his worries with you, creating a stronger emotional connection with the first person narrative. The color schemes in the book are paired really well together. Subdued colors for more timid scenes, and bolder colors complement expressive ones. The design of the text is as important as the illustration, so I think it's a very graphical approach to picture book making. I love discovering that the book already playfully starts on the cover page, the pigeon covering some of the text and seeming to break the wall, leaping out the boundaries of the page, setting the tone of the story. This is exactly the kind of reference book I was looking for. I tend to prefer drawing animal characters, but oftentimes my clients want human characters in their stories. It's very helpful to study how another artist interprets proportion, and having a variety of dynamic poses and expressions is a huge help for me. This one was such an unusual find. A book all about holding hands, all photographs of back shots of people. Another great reference because it captures more natural mannerisms of how people interact. So, when you look for references, be sure to check out photography books too. I guess it's my background in studying architecture, but I was excited to find this book documenting all kinds of house forms. Flipping through this book showed me so many possibilities to drawing roof and house shapes. I previously published an art book called Hong Kong Travelogue. I'm also planning to release the next volume, Japan Travelogue, at the end of fall. I eventually want to do a Toronto series, so this guidebook is a perfect resource to help me scout out interesting locations to draw. Standing in my way, but I must try to figure it out anyway. Tales of worries travel with a storm, but I must try to figure it out alone. Yeah, I must try to figure it out alone. I love coming to Omomo whenever I'm close by. It's basically like a Daiso as they carry many items from 100 yen shops from Japan. I think in this vlog I went into a journaling mode. I'm gathering inspiration to formulate my own journal one day. I really like guided journaling over agendas because I'm interested in the self reflection aspects. Wish that I could stay Wish for this moment to never go away But it's all in my mind And though I know that there is nothing to find You're a beautiful sight in the summer night And you can't put up a fight in the mist See how you've grown while 
you roam in the streets all alone. Okay, quick haul. More essentials for the new place: a biscuit-shaped microwave lid, super cute bear utensils, printed laundry bags, a switch screen protector, and a shark cable bite for a plug. A lot of July was spent in admin. I got some new job inquiries and spent days on drafting quotations, contracts, and negotiations. To me, illustration is not just about executing the artwork alone. It's a whole package of managing an entire business and filling the shoes of many roles. I treated myself to some AirPods so that I can have my own audio time at home. Dorky tried to design a plug to slot in the AirPods and attach to a string, as they sometimes randomly pop out my small ears. Does that happen to you? The prototype didn't work out, but it's exciting to be able to 3D print at home, and I'm looking forward to developing more projects with that in the future. Maybe printing our own figurines. If you couldn't tell already, I enjoy talking about the business side of illustration and being an entrepreneur. I think it has to do with being an INFJ, which is the advocate personality. I bought the startup journal by Leuchtturm and wanted to share with you. The concept of startup seems very tech-centric, but I found this guided journal walked you through establishing a business plan that could be applicable to art too. It walks you through defining your brand profile and the type of audiences you want to reach, as well as understanding the consumer needs of your services and how it affects your business direction. I found it helpful to have a systematic structure to write all these answers down. We may have an idea of what a creative career looks like in our heads, but tackling it intentionally with more detail can generate new understandings. I've completed a few sections so far and felt that I benefited with more clarity in my direction going forward, and it has helped me to plan for the future. So the other day I went to Walmart on the hunt for these pack of 64 crayons, which were on sale for $1.97. Whoa! I thought it'd be really fun just to play around with them. No pressure type of art supply. Really reminds me of my childhood days, especially with the smell and textures of crayon has always been something comforting to me. The colors were quite vibrant and the variation between tones was surprisingly subtle. I think it's been years since I've been able to go to a convention. Dorky will hop on to voiceover with me. I've never been to Anime North before, though I heard about it since high school days. You've been like eight times? What do you find interesting about it? I went to Anime North a lot because of my friends back in the day and around high school. We used to go to panels together, you know, create lots of discussions about the latest anime and stuff together. It was, it was a really great time to just be together for such a long weekend. There's also a lot of retro video games that really hit nostalgia and uh, really brought back a lot of fun memories also back in the day. I came to Anime North to see my friend Sarah's booth. She is the artist behind the brand Sebi Confetti. I would describe her style as colorful, playful, and her fantasy creature designs are so huggable. I'm always amazed by illustrators who do conventions. They produce all sorts of interesting merch and it must be so rewarding to physically actualize your work in this way. Look at those enamel pins. So good. The colorful shirts were really nice and we kind of enjoyed 
going out for a photo shoot together, just doing some very silly moves. I was most excited to get to read Sarah's picture book. It's a story of friendship and imagination, characterized by her playful use of colors and textures. I really greatly admire the looseness and sense of freedom in her paintings, something I hope to incorporate in my own creations. I discovered a new artist, Jeannie, at the con, and my friend and I were admiring her booth for quite some time. She reminds me of a cool 80s Japanese city pop style. I've been wanting to try risograph printing for a few years now, but haven't gotten the chance yet. I absolutely love the textures it gives, and the layering of tones seems like something very interesting to experiment with. I picked up a fresh sketchbook from her, and the bright yellow just makes picking it up to draw that much more cheerful. It's a hardcover with ribbon and pocket, and quite thick, high quality paper. Do you know any sketchbook manufacturers? I'd love to try to make one one day. Do you also decorate the cover of your sketchbook with stickers? reached the long painting segment. I'm painting a senbei shop I came across in Shibamata, Tokyo. After I finish the pencil sketch, I go in with a burnt umber colored pencil for the outlines. In terms of outlining with pencil, what is your selection criteria? I would select based on how sharp it can sharpen as I tend to have lots of tiny, tiny details in my paintings. The lead should be stiff and not prone to breakage. The color of the lead should be dark and saturated, and it should barely smudge when I erase the pencil layer underneath. So my top pick would be the Mitsubishi 880 brand. Any special considerations when you execute line work? Maybe I describe my approach as with a weight in hand. I try not to make marks with uniform pressure because I want the subtle bit of variation in stroke thickness and darkness. I feel that it loosens the line work a bit and better expresses the dimensionality of objects. Sometimes I feel constrained to use lots of outlining in my detailed paintings to make it legible but I hope in the future I can experiment more with just rendered forms. I think the most interesting part of this painting are the roof tiles. The wavy shape and rustic material allows for fun color experimentation. Maybe for beginner watercolorists, this is the most attractive quality of using this medium. Color blending, they, how do they work? Mm, there's many ways to approach it, but in this one, I'm using a technique called glazing, where I'm working in thin layers of paint and then going back in with a darker tint to make shadows. I felt that the tan color was too bright here. The shop has a long history and has aged wood. I'm applying a very watered down dark brown to tint the colors with less vibrancy. So I feel that this technique can achieve layered shadows, which adds visual interest and depth. Another tip is to avoid using black straight out of the tube unless you're going for a flatter graphic look. 
I like to use burnt umber mixed with Payne's Grey to get a more nuanced and granulated look. Even for whites, I prefer to add a tint of color such as using buff titanium to make a creamy white. When I think back to how my compositions have evolved over the years, the biggest one I see is that I don't draw things as straight on anymore. What I mean is that the perspective is always from an angle and no longer a front on elevation. I just think it makes my subject matter more dynamic and the slight shift in angle allows me to show more depth to objects. The monsters under your bed Deep and abiding Liking for you Is all I need Until my heart gives in I will do everything I can For you Yep, yep, it's another Leuchtturm journal haul. Is that how you say it? Leuchtturm, Leuchtturm, Leuchtturm. I was so uplifted by the startup journal, I researched the change journal, which was published first. It's marketed as a guided journal for self-optimization and touches on several themes. It takes you through a series of exercises to reflect, plan, and challenge yourself I like that you can download PDF templates of the worksheets if you run out and would like to have another go at it. It takes a wider snapshot and asks you to reflect on your personal goals in all aspects of life. One chapter I found very insightful was to think about leverages. What takes 20% effort but yields 80% result and vice versa. I think many artists are introverts and expanding comfort zones can be a challenge. This is a little random but I hope this can help someone out there. It's a weighted plush filled with bean bags, the same concept as a weighted blanket but in plush form. The science behind it is the deep pressure sensation on your nervous system gives a calming effect. In times I felt stressed I noticed that it was able to bring my heart rate down. I'm drawing a Hong Kong style cafe called Ta Tan Tang for one of my personal projects.
After I complete an illustration, I scan it in and take it into Procreate or Photoshop for further retouching. The simple explanation of this process is I adjust the artwork using the Levels tool in Photoshop and I paint over areas where I feel could use more saturated colors. Perhaps I'll go more in depth in a future video, but for now I'll end things here and see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.